What's up, everybody? It's your boy Chris Reese here. Now, we're in trying times, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, adjusting, transitioning uh, to this whole pandemic, COVID-19. It's affecting everybody. Now, as you sit at home, refreshing Instagram for the 10th time, or as you watch every episode on Netflix, and you have nothing else to do, Okay, and you ask yourself, what is everybody else doing? Well, guess what? On this new segment called Pandemic POV, POV meaning point of view, you're going to get that insight. Three guests on each episode are going to send in their videos, whether it is a student, a teacher, professional, a law enforcement officer, whatever the case may be, you're going to get those perspectives. Now, for my first guest, we have the head coach for Alexander Baseball, Coach Fernando Lemos. Coach Lemos, head baseball coach, Alexander High School. Uh, what were you looking forward to most that can't happen anymore? Uh, I guess we were looking forward to a full baseball season uh, with a group of kids that, uh, that really worked hard and... Uh, Wanted to get deep into the playoffs. Hopefully, uh, well, they were they wanted to make a, a deep run and uh, make history in Laredo. How do you think the coaches feel? I think the coaches right now feel a little out of place. Uh, it's a little awkward uh, not not being at school. We spend a lot of time with our athletes uh, on a daily basis. Uh, this is the first spring break I've had in in 16 years. Just feels awkward. I miss games, miss the practices. I miss just being with, around the boys. What's one positive out of this? I think we just realized what our priorities should, priority should be. God, family, health, and just to slow down and live one day at a time, not take anything for granted. Thanks, Coach Lemos. Those last few words really at home, that last message, um, sh everybody should understand. Um, me, for one, I get that, okay? Uh, in my high school years, uh, being an athlete, I got the opportunity to work with you and I know how special that was. So for the students, uh, for the athletes that don't have that opportunity anymore, um, it's tough. It's tough. And, and for anybody undermining that, man, go through it. Okay. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I had my last game. I had my last senior game. And it was a very special moment in my life. Unfortunately... Some people won't have that. It's important that we understand how they're feeling. So next we got T.C. Chavez. He's a senior varsity baseball player. T.C.? 2020, what a year, man. You know, with all this going on, prayers to friends, people, family out there in the world suffering from this. I mean, prayers to y'all. But besides that, Hearing about high school sports getting canceled and all, all sports actually, and especially us seniors of high school baseball, I mean, very heartbreaking to hear this kind of news. Been waiting our three years for this. I mean, working all our lives, well, working all our lives to play at the next level, man, and get to that next level eventually. And God willing, everything will go to his plan. But um, especially this year, it was one to keep in the memory book for a lifetime, you know, and getting it, getting it taken away like that, I mean, we didn't know how to react. And, but I mean, we got to deal with it. We got to move forward. I mean, we got to keep working if we want to get there to that next level. And you lower classmen, you know what to do, high expectations. I mean, it was going to be a special this year this year, but what can we do, right? We got to move forward. It's very heartbreaking, very heartbreaking, especially everybody out there, including all sports. And I mean, it's, I guess it's better for the younger athletes. I mean, there's a positive to it. I mean, going, you have, a, you have more time to get that work in, you get that strength in, that athleticism in you. I mean, get looked at. You got more time to do your research on what college you want to go to, what what do you want to do with your life, what you like, what you want to study in, and how, how to get how to reach out to coaches, just stuff, more stuff like that. I mean, you have more time to do so. You have more time to be an athlete. You have more time to work out. You got more time to recover. You got more more time to build yourself. And I mean, I, I see the positive in that. I mean, you lower classmen, you got to put in the work. High expectations every year. And let's go Bulldogs. Appreciate that, TC. Hey, man, I, I want to let everybody out there know you're not alone, okay? Everybody going through that, 
senior about to play their sports, whether it was track, uh, baseball, soccer, whatever the sport may be, you're not alone. Okay, a lot of people feel like that. Now, regarding this whole situation and talking about the athletics in schools, in UISD, okay, a lot of people have questions. But my next guest has those answers. It might create more questions, but that's perfectly fine. Send those in, and we'll get those answered. My next guest, Ms. Gloria Rendon, Deputy Superintendent for UISD. Good afternoon, Gloria Rendon, Deputy Superintendent for United Independent School District. And I was asked to uh, answer a few questions regarding COVID-19. The first one was, what was our district's perspective on the quarantine and on COVID-19? And I'm gonna speak, um, of course, as you were, we've already heard and know that this is, um, these are unprecedented times. And I don't think anybody could have predicted this was actually coming um, and to what effect it was going to have on the nation and of course on the world. The district was moving along uh, right before spring break and we were preparing for summer school, closing out the school year, graduations, and of course, starting up the 2021 school year. Uh, and those plans are always in motion for our district because it takes a long time uh, for the preparations to be made. Um, I believe that the quarantine and the closure of the schools was the appropriate uh, measure to be taken, not only by our governor, uh, Abbott, but also by our school board and our superintendent uh, because of the unknown, fear of the unknown. And uh, as a result of that, uh, parents, you know, I, I for one, speaking as one as a parent, I would not probably send uh, the, the children back to school. Uh, I would not have sent the children to school uh, in, in a sense when we are in the, in the middle of a pandemic. And of course, United Independent School District would always put the safety uh, of all of our students and of course our staff members at the forefront in any decision that was going to be made. And so I believe that the right call was made um, with regards to uh, the social distancing uh, and the measures that, that are in place with regards to the quarantine um, that is in effect. And of course our local leaders have done a tremendous job also in guiding us and of course um, setting up um, procedures that we know have made a difference in curtailing some of the cases of COVID-19. Um, on March 12th, as we were preparing for our League of Legends dinner and event, we were notified uh, by the City of Laredo Health Department that we um, there was a first case, the first confirmed COVID-19 case, which happened to be a UIZ employee. And I was asked by one of the reporters uh, from, Laredo, um, from Laredo who asked me, what do you think, you know, um, you have another UIZ employee who is a COVID positive. And the community, my response at that point was, it's, it's not a UIZ employee. It is, a, it is a community member of our city. Uh, and we are facing this not in isolation, but as a community. Um, right now, the closure is until May 4th. And uh, that was the governor's order. And of course, we are constantly monitoring and reviewing as a school system, um, what we are going to do um, beyond May 4th. No decision has been made, but we know, and I know that um, the district superintendent and the board members have very um, uh, cautiously uh, expressed to us, has, have, have expressed to us that of course we have to take caution and always keeping the safety of our students and our staff members at the forefront, all right? And so those, deci those decisions will be made um, soon uh, with regards to what the plans will be. Uh, the next question is, what does the COVID-19 closure, how does, it, how does it affect us? And as a school district administrator, um, I believe it affects the very core of what we offer as an, as an, as an instructional um, entity, as an educational system in our community. It affects the very core of who we are. Um, we have over 43,000 students and it, it affects how we do business on a day-to-day -day basis and operations, how we conduct our operations in a school system. And that is to provide a quality educational program for our students that has been impacted and affected. And so you start hearing about this um, 
COVID-19 slide and the learning slide. Uh, you've, we've looked at the learning at the COVID curve. Of course, we want to bring that down. But as an educational person, we look at that slide. And for the last um, probably two months, uh, six weeks of the end of the school year, that's still an adverse effect of our educational program because we weren't done yet, all right? We still have to provide that instruction to our students. Um, it also affects how we, the relationships that we have uh, with our students and that we have established with our students. That daily communication with them, with our parents, that is uh, tremendously affected. How we provide that emotional support for our students. Um, the social guidance that is provided, the nutrition uh, programs for our students, the bondings that we have, the uh, very essence of how they um, also prepare for their future is, is impacted and uh, affected. Uh, it's how we gather, how we train our athletes, how we get them to excel in fine arts, athletic programs and so forth. So all of that is impacted tremendously um, in, in, with, be, as a result of this closure. Uh, I was asked, who does it affect? It affects, of course, our students, first and foremost, 43,000 plus students in our, school, in our school system, but it also affects our 7,000 employees, all right? Our teachers who are at the very heart of this um, uh, closure, all right? Who are expected to do, continue providing instructional support to our students. And there's over 3,000 teachers who are doing this. And yes, we've had some challenges, but um, nonetheless, you, you hear all of these great stories of our teachers who are coming out, who are using the technology that we have at, at our hands and who, who are providing that instructional support for our students, not only through technology, but through a phone call, uh, through messaging, any type of communication that we can have. Our district, um, who does it affect? Um, it affects our senior class because uh, their rites of passages have, have been disrupted, all right? The class of 2020, uh, all of the activities that they were looking forward to with regards to proms, um, our graduation, ending of the closure of the school year, all of those are affected as well. Um, we look at those fine art programs, individuals who were going off to compete at, uh, at uh, district events, our athletic programs, students who are gonna close off their basketball seasons, their baseball seasons. Uh, of course, everything is on hold and everyone has had to adapt uh, with regards to uh, those particular events um, and, and activities that were going to take place. And the last question that I was asked to respond to was, what do teachers and students have to get accustomed to? Um, and that's probably the hardest question, um, but it's the whole way in which we provide that instruction to our students. That is what we have to get accustomed to. Um, and of course, that you work in isolation, uh, whether it be from peers or from uh, your face-to-face -face instruction with your teacher, um, that is the most difficult thing to probably get accustomed to. Um, working in isolation, not having that social connection to uh, your student body, your peers, your friends, and of course, to the adults um, who care and work with these particular students day in and day out throughout a school year. Thank you, Ms. Zendon, for providing us with that information. I know a lot of people had questions regarding how the district was going to accustom to this whole pandemic. And there's a lot on the district's plate, but you guys are doing a fantastic job on adjusting to distant learning. And it's been tough on the students. It's been tough on administrators and teachers. But we're in this together. Community city, state, country, we're in this together. We gotta remember that. Now, if you guys have questions, if you guys have concerns, if you wanna share your perspectives, bring them in, bring them in. This is what it's all about. As I mentioned in the beginning, we're bringing everybody together. It doesn't matter where you work, what you do, what school you go to, where you live, one thing is to communicate with each other, and another thing is to understand. And it's time for us to start understanding. You see, me, this whole quarantine, I can't be at home anymore, you know? Help me. But we got to. Okay, I want to see my friends again. Okay, we got to. Appreciate everybody sending your videos, sending your questions. 
to be included on the next segment of Pandemic POV.